Hi, today we will discuss about COMT inhibitors, catechol o methyl transferase inhibitors. What is COMT? COMT is called as catechol o methyl transferase enzyme and this enzyme is responsible for the metabolism of this uh, catechol amides. For example, if we take a structure like this, this is the dopamine and this is the norepinephrine and this is the epinephrine. If you observe all these, they are having a common structural moiety which is nothing but the catechol structure. And these mediators are having the catechol ring with an amine side chain, so they are called as catechol amines. So COMT, catechol vomethyl transferase enzyme can produce the metabolism of these catechol amines. For example, let us indicate the catechol moiety like this and the side chain is indicated by R. And we can start the numbering from the side chain 1, 2, 3 and 4. So now in this catechol we can observe the OH groups are present at the third and fourth positions. And here the COMT enzyme is going to attack the OH group at the third position. So by action of the COMT enzyme, the OH group is going to be converted into OCH3 group, that is a methoxy group. So COMT, catechol o methyl transferase enzyme will convert the 3 OH group into 3 methoxy group. In this way, this enzyme will produce one of the metabolite which is nothing but the 3 methyl catechol. So in this metabolic reaction, methyl group is going to be transferred to the catechol where this methyl group is going to be donated by S adenosyl methionine. By this, the COMT can convert the catechol into a non catechol. Today, let us see in this video how the inhibitors of the COMT enzyme, commonly known as COMT inhibitors, are useful in the treatment of Parkinson's disease and how they are acting in this particular uh, neurodegenerative disorder and how they are going to be given and what are the possible side effects. Now, let us go with the COMT inhibitors. COMT inhibitors can be identified by their suffix, they are having a common suffix like the capone. We have two drugs in this category like the entecapone and tolcapone. These two drugs are chemically belonging to a category of nitrocatechols. So let us start with the tolcapone. Tolcapone is having the structure like this. And you can observe one of the ring system here. This is a catechol with a nitro group adsently present. So this is nothing but the nitro catechol. And again, if you observe on the other side, again, it is having a phenyl ring with a methyl group. That means it's having the para toline group. Toline is present as a radical in this structure. So within the name tolcapone, the TOL indicates uh, it's having the toline moiety. And if you combine these two phenyl rings with the ketone, they are having one of the central ring that is a benzophenone. So tolcapone is a nitrocatechol. On the other side, it is having the toline moiety. And chemically, it is also a benzophenone derivative. And if we give the naming to this ring, because both of the phenyl rings are not similar, we can call it as methanone. This methanone is attached with the two phenyl rings. So if we give the numbering to the one of the phenyl ring, this is 1, 2, 3. 3, 4 and 5. So it is having the third position and fourth position dihydroxy group. So 3, 4 dihydroxy and fifth position nitro group. So 5 nitro and which is attached with the phenyl. So 5 nitro phenyl. So 3, 4 dihydroxy, 5 nitro phenyl ring is going to be attached on the one side of the methanone. And on the other side, it is having the paramethyl phenyl. Otherwise, we can also write 4 methyl phenyl. So that is the name of this tolcapone. Tolcapone is a nitro catechol with a toline moiety and chemically it is a benzophenone derivative. Now let us go with the entecapone. Entecapone is having the structure like this. Again you can observe the same ring system. So it is also having the nitro catechol moiety. And if we give the name for this entecapone, here we have to identify the principal function group as the amide. So we have to start the numbering from the amide. So this is one. 2 and 3. So it is having the propanamide but it is having a double bond at the second and third position so it can be represented as prop 2 enamide. So it is a 2 propinamide. And at the first position nitrogen is having the diethyl group so N and diethyl and second position cyano group is there and third position what is the group present. 
so third portion it is saying the nitro moiety which can be represented as 3 4 dihydroxy and 5 nitrophenyl just like in the tolcapone so this is the complete name of the entecapone so if we see the tolcapone and entecapone both are having the same structural moiety nitro -catechol. now let us see how these drugs are going to act and how they are useful in the treatment of parkinson disease these COMT inhibitors are used as add-on therapy. That means these drugs are not used alone. Particularly these drugs are given along with the Leodopa in order to increase its action. So now what we can conclude. Whether the COMT inhibitors are going to be acting on the Leodopa. Otherwise the COMT inhibitors are going to be acting on the dopamine. Because the Leodopa is having the structure like this. And dopamine is having the structure like this. So if we observe both of these structures are having the catechol moiety. That means the COMT which is the catechol O-methyl transferase enzyme can produce the metabolism of both levodopa as well as the dopamine. Now how these COMT inhibitors are working? Whether they are inhibiting the metabolism of the levodopa otherwise they are inhibiting the metabolism of the dopamine. So let us see it in detail. So let us start with the effect of the COMT inhibitors on the dopamine metabolism. The dopamine which is one of important catecholamine and which is important uh, for controlling the motor functions and when these dopamine levels are going to fall within the central nervous system it produces a Parkinson like symptoms. So, so this dopamine can be metabolized into one of the metabolite dopac dihydroxyphenylacetic acid by one of the important enzyme Mavo B enzyme. This Mavo B enzyme along with another enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme will convert the dopamine into the dopac that is a dihydroxyphenylacetic acid. Then this dopac can be metabolized by the COMT enzyme the catechol o methyl transferase enzyme so that it is going to be converted into HVA homovanilic acid. In this way dopamine can be metabolized by two important enzymes Mavo B enzyme as well as COMT enzyme. And here in this metabolism, initially either Mavo B can act, otherwise COMT can also act. And both of these enzymes are involved in the conversion of the dopamine into homovanilic acid. And here Mavo B enzyme is going to be inhibited by selegiline, which is again used in the treatment of Parkinson disease. And COMT is going to be inhibited by COMT inhibitors, which are indicated by the suffix capone. So capone drugs are going to inhibit the COMT enzyme. So in this way, COMT inhibitors can inhibit the metabolism of the dopamine within the brain. But this is not the main mechanism of the COMT inhibitors. Because even we block the COMT, still the dopamine can be metabolized by the Mavo B enzyme. So inhibition of the metabolism of the dopamine is not the main mechanism involved behind the action of the COMT inhibitors in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. As already we have discussed, COMT inhibitors are not given alone and they are given along with the levodopa. So their main action depends on the inhibition of the metabolism of the levodopa. So now let us see what is the effect of the COMT inhibitors on the levodopa metabolism. Suppose this is a CNS and this is the periphery and between these two a strict border is present which we call the blood brain barrier. So this blood brain barrier is going to allow the lipophilic drugs only. Levodopa is having a, some special carrier by which it can be entered into the CNS. So Levodopa is going to be transported with an amino acid carrier so that the Levodopa can enter into the CNS where the Levodopa can be metabolized to produce the dopamine by one of the enzyme Dopa decarboxylase enzyme DDC. In this way Levodopa can increase the dopamine levels within the central nervous system which can improve the symptoms in the Parkinson's disease. But here one of the important aspect is that the levodopa should be entered into the CNS. But at the same time levodopa can be metabolized within the periphery by the two enzymes. One is the DDC and the other one is the COMT. So here we are going to focusing on the enzyme COMT. Levodopa can be converted into O-methyl levodopa by one of the enzyme COMT. Catechol O-methyl transferase enzyme. By this metabolism, not only the levodopa is converted to its metabolite like the O-methyl levodopa, but this metabolite is then going to inhibit the entry of the levodopa by competing with the same transporter. 
So whenever the OP the levodopa levels are going to increase in the periphery, it will inhibit the entry of the levodopa into the CNS. So here COMT inhibitors play an important role. COMT inhibitors are going to inhibit the peripheral metabolism of the levodopa. So it is not converted into O methyl levodopa, which is going to interfere with its absorption into the CNS. In this way, COMT inhibitors can increase the permeability of the levodopa into the CNS, where it can be converted into dopamine and thereby it can increase the dopamine levels within the CNS. And interestingly, the COMT inhibitors can also act at the CNS level. So levodopa can also be attacked by the same enzyme COMT which is present within the CNS. So again this enzyme is going to convert the levodopa into O-methyl levodopa within the CNS. This enzyme is uh, inhibited by one of the drug tolcapone. So tolcapone is, can only show the activity at the central level whereas entecapone cannot show its activity because entecapone cannot cross the blood brain barrier. So action at the central level is not again the main mechanism but action at the peripheral level is main the mechanism of the COMT inhibitors. In this way what we can conclude that COMT inhibitors are going to inhibit the metabolism of the levodopa at the periphery thereby they can increase the, the entry of the levodopa into the CNS. Now let us see effect on on off effects of the levodopa. So levodopa which is present in the periphery it should cross the blood brain barrier and should enter into the CNS. So central levels of the levodopa are very important to show its action on the Parkinson disease. But the central levels of the levodopa can be reduced and when these levels are going to fall a sudden precipitation of uh, Parkinson symptoms like the rigidity and tremor can be observed in the patients. So this effect where the effect of the levodopa is not present we can call off effect and whenever the levels of the levodopa are going to be raised the symptoms can be improved which we can call on effect. So by the fluctuations of the levodopa level centrally on off effects of the levodopa can be produced. So how can we minimize this on off effects? As we have seen levodopa is going to be metabolized uh, into o methyl levodopa by the COMT enzyme within the periphery. So if we block this peripheral metabolism of the COMT by the COMT inhibitors then we can increase the levodopa entry into the CNS and we can minimize the fluctuations of the levodopa levels within the CNS. So in this way COMT inhibitors not only increase the action of levodopa they are going to minimize the on off effects of the levodopa. So that's why these drugs are given along with the levodopa. And what are the initial doses with the COMT inhibitors? So here the entecapone is initially used at a dose of 200 mg and tolcapone is used at a dose of 100 mg. And uh, these drugs are not used alone and they are given along with the dose of the levodopa. What are the side effects? The common side effects like the diarrhea and nausea can be observed. And another important side effect is the dyskinesia. Dyskinesia is not the side effects related to the COMT inhibitors but it is one of the side effects related to the levodopa. But whenever these drugs are combined dyskinesia can be increased because these drugs are going to increase the levels of the levodopa within the CNS. So dyskinesia is going to be produced because of the enhanced effects of the levodopa. And other side effects include the dizziness, fatigue and anxiety that can be observed with the COMT inhibitors. Tolcapone is one of the drugs which can cross the blood brain barrier at the same time it also having some activity on the hepatic system. So tolcapone can produce the fulminant liver failure. So whenever this drug is going to be given it produces some hepatotoxicity. Due to this hepatotoxicity this drug is used under extreme conditions in combination with the levodopa. Even this drug is going to show its activity on the central COMT enzyme but still hepatotoxicity is uh, one of the limitation of this tolcapone. So that's about the COMT inhibitors. COMT inhibitors like the entecapone and tolcapone are chemically belonging to the nitrocatechols and these drugs are going to inhibit the one of the important enzymes COMT catechol o methyl transferase enzyme. This enzyme is going to attack the catechol related drugs and it is going to convert the 3 OH group into 3 methoxy group. Here both the levodopa as well as dopamine are the catechol substances so that COMT can metabolize both of these. But here the COMT inhibitors are going to inhibit the metabolism of the levodopa thereby they can increase the levodopa levels within the CNS. 
which in the periphery levodopa can be converted to O-methyl levodopa, which will prevent the entry of the levodopa by competitive inhibition for the amino acid transporter. So COMT inhibitors are going to inhibit this peripheral metabolism, thereby they improve the entry of the levodopa within the central nervous system. So that's about the COMT inhibitors and if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching this video.